Playmaker offers a lot of different things we can do with strings. There's a lot of functionality there. So let's take a look through that. First thing I've got set up is a GUI text object. And uh, it's the text result is what I've got set up by default, just so we can see where it is. And I'm using a set GUI text action. And all I'm doing is outputting the value of a text output uh, global variable that I've got set up here. And if I look at my global variables, I've got several, but this text output has no initial value. So uh, if I run the game right now, uh, just nothing. It outputs nothing. But this updates every frame, so uh, throughout the examples I can put text to the screen. So let's look once more. I've also got a string example here in my global variables. And uh, just like the text output, but in this one I've already put a value in. You have won the game. All right, so that's some information already there. And here I have a game object, uh, which I can do various string actions on, just as a nice little holder. So let's take a look, first of all, as we scroll down at string. There's a whole bunch of actions in here that we can use. Let's start out with a simple set string value. Uh, remember, we're using the text output global variable to display here to the screen. And uh, also, I just showed you the global variable string example. And pretty neat, right down here, it shows you the value that's inside of that uh, variable. So you don't have to go digging back through that menu we just looked at. You can see it right here in the action. So we're going to take the text output and give it the value that's in this one, which will be you have won the game. And uh, then uh, that should output it to the screen. So let's take a peek. There we go. You have won the game. So it's that easy to just set the value of any given string. And it doesn't have to be from a variable. I could also say, um, you are a great player. I could just type text directly in, and it will still output that. So you can do it dynamically. You can do it hard-coded here with, with typing any way you'd like to do it. Plenty of flexibility. All right. I am going to uh, go ahead and leave that here because we're going to use that a little bit later. But let's take a look now at uh, get string length. Let's say uh, I might need to know out of my string example, let's say I wanted to know how many characters were in there. Uh, what this will do is tell me exactly how many characters are in that string. Uh, I need to store the result as an integer. So I've got a nice little integer set up here. You can use any integer you'd like. And if I run this, uh, you will notice it tells me there are 22 characters in that. Okay, pretty cool. Uh, if I would like to output that to this to the screen, like we did the first example, I can't directly choose that here uh, because it's not an integer, right? Uh, or it's not a string. I mean, this only outputs strings. So I will just do a quick little step and convert my int to string. And there's all kinds of different conversions you can do in Playmaker, which is really convenient. So I need to have that happen right after the get string length. So I'll take the int count, because remember, right here I stored the number of uh, characters, the length of that string in int count. So I'll pass that in here and turn it into string one, which is just another simple string I've got uh, variable hanging out here. And then I can use string one as the value that we pass to the text output. So now if we run the game, we get that value of 22 output as a string, output as text to the screen. So that's a way you can get uh, information and pass it on through. And that works with all sorts of things. You don't need to only use, say, this get string length. Let me get rid of that. You could take dynamic data from, say, like this cube. Uh, let's go ahead and do a uh, get vert count. Uh, I will choose the cube, the almighty cube. And I'll store that, we'll just use the same integer, right? Because we're not using it anymore in that other one. So int count, and remember, we're going to convert the int count right here into a string. So this should get the number of vertices in the cube, convert it into a string, and pass it on through. Let's take a peek. And there we go. We've got 24 verts in this cube. And uh, easy as that. So you can pull dynamic data from all sorts of different sources and convert it and turn it into a string uh, for storage or output to the screen. Let me clear these out. And let's take a look at a few more things we can do with strings. 
Again, scroll down to string. And you'll see that uh, right here with the get string length, we could also get string left or right. Let's take a peek at those. I'll start with the get string left. Once again, let me choose my string example because it's got my you have won the game text in it. And it lets me choose a character count. And I can just enter any number in there. So I put in five. What it's going to do is start at the left side of this string and count in by whatever number I've put in here and then give me the result back. And here I'll store it as uh, string one. And let's go ahead and take a peek. If I run that, uh, there I go, U underscore H. And in fact, uh, we left this here so we could do this. Remember, I'm just passing string one through. So if I keep using string one in these examples, it'll keep going to the screen up here. So there, we've just got U underscore H, which is the first five characters of that string. And I can get uh, any other number, like let's say I wanted the first 10. That's just as easy. I'll just do it that way. You have a space W. And you'll notice that the spaces do count as characters in a string. That's an important distinction. And uh, it doesn't have to just be left. The get string right works the same way. So I could pull from my string example, say the five characters from the right side this time instead of from the left. And uh, see how that works. And we end up with game exclamation point. So that's a way you can pull the uh, the value of a uh, values out of just the left or right side of the string, which is a pretty neat thing to be able to pull the string apart. Well, what if I wanted to change something inside of a string? I could use string replace. And this is like a search and replace for strings. Let's say instead of you have won the game, what if I wanted the player to uh, uh, you know take one and replace it with lost? Because you're a terrible player. You've lost the game, buddy. Uh, I'll store that as string one again. And now it's just going to do a search and replace and give the result uh, here to our new string and pass it on out. You've lost the game. So we can do search and replace within strings. I can also get a substring, which means rather than just getting something from the left or the right, what if I wanted to pull the word uh, have out of there, right? I could, I could index in some amount of numbers, like I could come in four characters and then pull in, say, the next uh, eight. So instead of starting from the left, it actually counts in by whatever your start index number is and then picks the number of characters in your length. So in this case, I count in four and then get the next eight. And have one are the next eight characters. And that, of course, like everything else, is uh, totally dynamic. You could, uh, you could pass these in as variables, too, if you wanted. So you can do some pretty neat stuff whether it be just making random um, names, you know, for characters or uh, story elements that you want to create that have all kinds of dynamic stuff. And just it's really kind of endless when you start thinking about all the neat stuff you could do with this. All right. Select random string lets you uh, put in. Uh, you could either enter like here. Let's put in uh, our string example. You've won the game. And then I will put in, you can put in any number, right? I'm just going to stick with a three for now. I'll say, you are a, get that out of the way so I can see what I'm doing, bad player. Or I'll put here, thanks for playing. And I will store that string as string one. And when I run this, it will randomly pick one of these three and output the result for me. There's thanks for playing. Let's try it again. You've won the game. So as you can see, you'll randomly pick from some amount of strings. Thanks for playing again. And you've won the game. Eventually, we would find this other one. And you can wait with these numbers. You can adjust uh, the higher the number between 0 and 1, the more likely it is that uh, this one will be picked. So I could make like I can make it really likely that uh, you know I'd say you're a bad player and far less likely that you'd do that. Um, and see, you're a bad player comes up because the likelihood is way higher. So you can adjust those things to taste as well for uh, the level of randomness. Okay, now how to bring all this together is with the build string. 
So you use all these other actions to like take strings apart and figure out how to replace things or randomly pick stuff or specifically pick things, do all the, all the intelligent work you want to do. And then you put it all together with a build string. So uh, again, you can use any number of parts. I'm going to use three right here in my example. And for instance, let's, uh, let's do like our cube thing again was a good example. So I'll say the cube has, and then I'm going to use, um, well, we need some value in there and then uh, verts. And I want to separate it with a space. Okay. I'll store it as string one when I'm all done, because that, if you remember, is what we're passing right here to output. And then let's one more time really quickly set up our uh, get uh, vert count from the cube. Nice and quick, store that as an int. And if you remember, then we just convert, whoops, helps if you type right, convert uh, int to string, int to string one. Let me make sure that goes up. You gotta get these in the right order. So I'm gonna get the vert count, I'm going to convert it to a string. And then here, uh, because now I've got the vert count as string one, I can pass that in there. And it's okay. You don't always have to use the same two, but it's okay because I use it here and then I overwrite it here. And that's all right because I'm done with it up here. So what's going to happen with build string is it's going to uh, take this first text and then add a space as a separator. Like I could have used a comma and a separator. I could have used a dash. You know, I could use anything I want there. I'm just going to use a, a simple space. So it's going to take the cube has and then add a separator and then input the value of this, which will be the number of verts, which we've gotten dynamically, and then input another space and then add this amount of text. Okay, so you can combine variables, dynamic stuff, directly typed in things, whatever. So let's go ahead and run that. And now I get a whole new string. The cube has 24 verts. So you could store that, you could output it to the player, you could update that dynamically. You know, like you have 72 health points or something like that and just let it update as you're playing. Any number of things you can do here. So as you can see, uh, string actions are really powerful in Playmaker and there's a lot you can do with them when you dig in and uh, start to have some fun.